hello and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. Welcome to all my viewers. Uh, it's been fun to see um, thanks to a few lovely ladies who gave me a couple shout outs. Uh, nice to have some new visitors. So welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, behind me is my halo quilt and I have it at this angle because I have been told <laughs> that neighbor Ron likes to count how many I have done and I don't I don't remember what I showed you guys the last time I don't know if I have more I know I've rearranged it a little bit um, so that's what I have let's pause for a moment while Ron counts one no I'm just kidding <laughs> uh, so we've done it we've 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 made it through 2023, yet another year, another fabulous year of stitching and sewing, um, and I have the videos to prove it. But um, as is almost every year, in as a retail goddess that I am, um, yeah, just going into 2024 like a deflating balloon. <laughs> but we're doing it. We're making it through. And I would like to say to 2023, in the grand words of my favorite podcast that we were mourning the last time I was with you guys, we are going to have no follow-up questions. 2023 is over. It's done with. I'm over it. Let's, let's say hello to 2024. Um, there are exciting things happening in 2024. Um, some big birthdays in my family. Um, I'm included in that. My dad will be 80. And my and myself will be 50. I'm so excited. I mean, like, really, who knew I would be this old? I just... It really never occurred to me <laughs> that one day I would be this old. Like, it just never seemed possible. Um, not because I was a bad kid or anything. Just to just... I was just that naive, I guess. Uh, living in the now, really not giving a care to my future. Um, today has been a self-care pajama day. I have grounded myself. I have told all my family responsibilities that I am not doing any of them. <laughs> and have, have fun without me because I'm not going anywhere. And uh, so I spent the morning just kind of watching a few floss tubes and then I came into my sewing room and I honestly in the last week really I haven't cared to pick up a needle. I've really wanted to sew and I've been a little hesitant about sewing on my machine because I've had my, I bought my machine about a year and a half ago. And I have uh, not professionally maintenanced it. Um, I take pride in taking care of my equipment for sure because it's a huge investment. Even though my machine is only a couple thousand dollars, <laughs> it's still a large investment. Um, and um, on the higher end of things. So I want to take good care of it. But I had, and I think I've mentioned it before, there is called a Sewing Doc Academy. Uh, they are based out of Atlanta. And uh, this lady, Andy, uh, really has her own uh, sewing machine repair business. And she has uh, created this online academy to teach people to maintenance their own machine. Um, so for $250, you can uh, sign up to the academy and uh, have access to every machine that she's worked on, essentially. She's got a very vast um, uh, library of videos on machines. Now, this is not designed for the very high-end, very computerized machines, um, but for the everyday, older machines, um, you know, a machine repair person is far and few between these days, and 
uh, a lot of us live far away from a re retailer or a sew sewing machine repair person that can do uh, a maintenance on, on our machine. So I wanted to learn and quite frankly, kind of intrigues me. I, you know, if and when I ever get to have my own shop, it's something that I would like to offer as a service and learn. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a tinkerer or I wouldn't have classified myself growing up to be the person that like took things apart and wanted to learn how it works. Um, but I do love tools. I love them so much. Um, and I do think it's very cool how sewing machines work and I, I think it's feasible for a woman of my skill and ability to learn. So I think I would like to learn. All that to say is um, I've been hesitant to jump in. I haven't been able to watch all the videos on the uh, Sewing Doc Academy um, and I didn't have all the recommended supplies um, but I I was getting increasingly uh, anxious that I hadn't seen inside my machine so I felt like I should at least open her up and see what's going on and much to my delight uh, she looks beautiful on the inside I was able to uh, take it apart put it back together I took off my sewing machines covers um, I didn't do like the full maintenance because like I said I didn't have all the um, recommended grease and degreaser and I don't have um, an air compressor which she recommends having and I haven't bought the canned air that she recommended as a backup um, I hadn't bought any of that yet uh, for various reasons which I'll show you later I'd rather spend my money on other things um, so uh, I got to take a look at it did a little cleaning up I was really expecting a lot of lint on the bottom tray of it where things had fallen through but there wasn't I did a good job I'm so proud of myself um, that I've I've taken good care of it while I've had it and I there wasn't a lot to maintain I gave her a little oil where it was recommended left the greasy parts alone uh, didn't do too much degreasing and cleaning up so um, when I do acquire those products I can uh, do it well the next time but I was able to put it back together and my bobbin winder still works and all the all the timing still works well so uh, I've been sewing up a storm today I'll show you what I'm working on later um, other than doing a few more blocks of this, and like I said, um, I've done some cross stitch, but it hasn't been calling to me. I feel like I've just needed to have a little, uh, something that I didn't have to pay as close attention to, which doesn't make sense because you do have to pay attention when you're sewing because you're sewing a straight line is not easy. Right, Ron? It's not easy. Um... <laughs> And sewing a consistent seam is also not easy. <laughs> but I, I just had some things that I could just slap two pieces of fabric together and sew through and hear that rhythmic uh, sound of the machine. Um, and that is what was soothing my soul. So, um, like I said a couple weeks ago, I, I think I showed you guys, I had made two bags. Um, one for my mom that I couldn't show you um, because she watches me I didn't want to give it away before Christmas and then I had made this bag as well and I had made both of them out of mini charm packs Ron you know what a mini charm pack is right it's a you know a pre pack of pre cuts of two and a half inch squares a charm pack is a five inch square so the mini charm packs see here's a charm pack. charm pack five squares mini charm pack one quarter of that um, so I made this bag too that I loved, gave it a little bling, um, and so I bought some more, uh, and I made this guy, um, cause if you guys remember the, the pattern fabric, I bought this fabric, but in a different colorway in the green, uh, for my pinwheel quilt, which I haven't done any more work on. 
um, and I don't know that I could lay my hands on anything right now. Um, but I went to that quarter shop and discovered it came in blue and I'm so sad. I would have loved to have had the blue instead of the green, but it'll be fine. I'll pull myself together. But I got a charm pack of the flower land um, and made myself a little bit of a smaller bag. And I gave myself the little um, rickrack. This is how I did my mom's, um, but hers is a little taller. So I used all 42 uh, 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 squares out of the charm pack. And I wanted to practice with this kind of zipper. Because I have a lot of these zippers and I've never really been um, happy sewing them. They always, they, they haven't looked good to me, so I think I finally did it. Let me be nerdy, I'll show it to you if I can. Um, I, my neutral thread is, my favorite one is like a butter yellow. Um, I don't, I don't know why I like a colored thread more than anything like a, a lot of people like to use a gray, like a dove color or, um, a, an ecru color, um, because it blends in with their fabric more. But like when you're doing seam work, I find that you really don't see it, but this light yellow just kind of makes me happy. And if you can see, I did, um, what I was watching a Janome video. What did they call this? A three stitch zigzag? I don't know if you can see where it's got three stitches before it starts the other zig to the zag. So I did that in the yellow and it blends in real nicely. So I think that's a good technique for me to zipper that up. So I wanted, I was like, how do I finish that? So what I did is I made the um, patchwork. And then I found the backing that I wanted to do and I just sewed the backing on and you know ironed it so that there was a nice seam so at the edge it's a nice finished seam where the zipper is because that's important to me you don't want it to look funny um, and then I just did the rest of the bag the way I normally do and I cut the lengths here to slide the zig uh, the Rick rack in there to make it a little more decorative. I love it. I'd be willing to sell this. If you are interested in it, let me know because I know how to make more and I would like to sell bags. So if you are interested in this, call me, slide into my DMs, email me, however you want. Um, so let me jump into my cross stitch. I mean, that's what I made like last week. Uh, no, let me keep going. Let me just unpile my pile. I put the thing I was working on today. Like I said, I was in my sewing room. And when I made my mom's bag, she was the first charm pack I, I um, bag I made. And it was a charm pack that's kind of been floating around in my in my stuffs over here. Uh, same thing with this guy. I had a couple of fat quarters in this charm pack kind of just floating around. I was like, you know, I'm just going to make something. I was needing the the satisfaction of a finish and a start kind of thing and have something beautiful that I just want to touch and love. Um, so my mom's charm pack was like that too. And um, I was looking around in the stuff that I had lying around. Because as we all do, we have a ton of different starts. Um, I had a, a leader and ender uh, idea for a quilt. And also inspired by the last homely house, Kate. Um, she has one inch square patchwork uh, curtains. And so at some point I had used the AccuCutter to cut a bunch of one inch squares. Um, and uh, so I had started doing some leader enders. I had a bunch of them sewn together. Couple things. Uh, they weren't perfect. Uh, seams kind of all over the place. Uh, sometimes the squares weren't cut perfectly to one and a half inches. Um, but I said, you know what? Fiddle-dee-dee. 
who cares? This is just for me. This is just to sew together. So I took them all today and finished, put them all together. I thought maybe I would also make a bag out of this, but I got more satisfaction of sewing them all together. And you can see some of them have half squares in there. If I move it around like this, you can hardly see any, any errors, right? But uh, yeah, so I would say this is probably two feet. The, um, the four patches that I have put together are probably 12 by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. I can measure. Yeah, about two feet square. So what will this become? I don't know. Maybe it will just become a practice piece. Maybe I'll bind it and put it on my couch or on a chair or on a table or maybe it can be part of the back of a quilt. Who knows? But it was fun and it spent most of my day today. That's what I did today. And there's lots of fun fabrics in here like um, there's Star Wars. There's some mugs of beer. That's an old fabric from my mom's um, stash. There's some um, Anna Maria Horner. There's some K Facet. Um, just lots of little, little Florida Gators happening there. So a lot of a lot of things from older projects. This is something that my cousin Neil gave me. I made uh, tote bags out of that material too and this material too so from far and wide just kind of fun oh here's another one uh, this came from a class I did uh, at Thimblebee's in Waxhaw uh, there's a little sewing school they mostly cater to kids um, but I took a couple of their adult uh, classes and it was delightful um, met some fun people there like Tula. Hi Tula. All right. So now I have cross stitch to share. Let's start with this bag, shall we? We shall. Okay, so in this bag I have a um Jacob chart modern folk embroidery. Um I bought the pattern on an app called Silk. Um, which is similar to um, Pattern Keeper for those of you that are Androiders. Um, let's see if I can find it quickly so I can show you the. Um, I still prefer Good Notes. Uh, oh no, I don't want. I don't want to give feedback now. No, I don't want to look at that either. Let me show you the project. So this is Little Birds Quaker. Oh, you, can you see the reflection in my window? Um, so I haven't gotten much further on it, but I have done a few uh, more stitches in it. It's turning out really pretty. This is 40 count linen from Fox and Rabbit called Dust Bunny. I stole this, I believe, I don't know if Dust Bunny is a regular color for them. I got this um, when they were partnering on a on a chart that they also did a reproduction for Fox and Rabbit Designs. Um, so I bought, and he did the fabric special for that. I only bought a quarter, uh, fat quarter of the fabric because I didn't think I was going to do the whole chart. And now I might not do the chart at all. And I stole this fabric <laughs> for this one. Um, I wanted to also use uh, Rox Roxy Floss, uh, Roxy, uh, Roxy Floss Co which these are the old labels. Uh, so I wanted to try black because I really enjoyed my last all black project that I started last, not, not November 23, but November 22. I did the um, black November stitch, but this is called charcoal and it is a variegated hand dyed thread. Um, and, but it has a, a much more subtle um, variegation. I really like it. But I wanted to try this thread 
because everyone ra raves about it. Um, and I would say I really like how it stitches. I concur. Um, I do like it a lot. This leads me to a question. Um, I've never done an all red thread uh, chart yet either. And I'm interested to know what are your favorite black threads, silk or cottons? Uh, what's your favorite color? Black. And then what is also your favorite red? Again, silk or cottons. What, what's your favorite number in DMC or your favorite brand and color name? Um, I'm interested to know. Um, I did on Christmas Day uh, do a little work on Mrs. Campbell. So, isn't she pretty? She's so pretty. Uh, she's also a struggle. Um, I do feel like I've got the right, right techniques now. So I've struggled because this is 46 count. It is 103s. Uh, so it's the silk thread and it's very fine thread. Um, so I at first struggled with the right needle. So using a beading needle is definitely much easier to use and um, the thread doesn't come unthreaded as often and uh, it goes through the 46 count holes much more easily. I will say that I've tried a couple different beading needles and the uh, John James uh, ball point beading needle is the best needle that I have found. It's short uh, shorter uh, side instead of the long beading needles and because of the ballpoint it's just a little less snaggy. Um, so this is what I've done with Mrs. Campbell. Uh, the sun's going down now so I was trying to catch the sunlight but see if you can. You can still kind of see it. Get a little closer. Don't be shy. Oh look there's some dog hair on there. Thanks CD. <laughs> Her hair gets everywhere, I tell you. Um, so, it's a good thing she's a sweet dog. That's where I'm at. Uh, I will also tell you the hesitation, and I don't mind uh, being transparent about this, is that uh, one of the things I love about this chart is that it, it, the saying, it says, keep your work neat and pay attention to it. When I, I feel like uh, Mrs. Oban, Mrs. Campbell, Mrs. Campbell, she lived in Oban. Uh, Mrs. Campbell, I think, might be disappointed in my work, and I feel um, I feel silly saying this, but I have uh, avoided it because I feel like I'm disappointing Mrs. Campbell because I have so many mistakes in it. Um, I've pulled up my big girl panties and uh, and uh, dealing with it. Let me turn the light on. Excuse me. As I get up, do you see all the threads? I. I promise I've been sewing. Proof. Proof I've been sewing. Oh, thank goodness we made it through the winter solstice, right? So the days are still short, but they are only getting longer. Thank the Lord. Um, I have not done a ton of work on um, a peacock... Uh, Unicorn and a Badger. This beauty. Oh, isn't she pretty? Uh, again, I don't have a good reason why. I think it's a... Uh, I always like to pay attention to how I'm feeling and why. Just because I'm curious of like what's connected to what. And I don't know. I just... I don't know if it's that I just... I don't want to pay attention to a chart... I just want to sew things together kind of deal. Which, I mean, I could then do the green, but I was uninspired to do the green. It just felt like a lot of work, and I don't, I don't quite understand why. But um, I do have all the page outlined, so I just need to do the fill-in on the motifs, and uh, then I can move on to the green, or move on to the next page, as I so desire. So I have done some stitching on it, and it is, it is really pretty. I still love it. 
I just, uh, you know, you gotta stitch what you love. You gotta stitch what you're into in the moment. And this hasn't been it. Um, I do need to sew more on Halo. And I uh, intend to do so. I have my, I finished with the ones and now I'm moving on to the twos. And what I mean by that is that the half, the circle part, the pie part, um, the ones, I forget which one is which, but uh, one way, one number I sew, I iron the seams in, and the other number I iron the seams out, which will help me nest those seams when I go to sew them together, because these blocks are not, they're not square. So that will help me fudge and line up uh, so that the circles line up the, the easiest, the best way. Um, so I've gotten the ones done and now I'm on to the next one and I think I have four more blocks queued up that I just need to glue baste and sew. Um, this has been what I've been glue basting with um, and it is Roxanne glue based it and I have liked it the best because of the applicator. So it's a little dot, um, and it it washes out once once it wa you know once I wash it. It's only te it's only temporary. So that was a little beaker action there for you. When you know, you know, the Muppets rule. Um, so I I I have some left. I shouldn't feel the need to stop, but I am actually kind of nervous that I might not have enough, which I also think I probably have plenty to finish this quilt, but I've been hesitant now <laughs> because I don't have a backup, so I didn't want to run out. Also, it seemed like a lot of work. This, this um, quilt is very fun to put together, but it is also <laughs> very laborious. <laughs> It is a lot of work. Once you get on a roll, you're good. But getting started, ooh, doggy. I mean, am I right, Ron? Am I right? Ron and I took this class together in September. Um, and it is, it is a challenge. But one that we can do together, I promise. Ron, you can do this. When it comes down to it, even though it's curved piecing, you really are just sewing a straight line. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> and hey, it's coming along. It's coming along. So I think I have 36 of these inner um, um, blocks to do. I had dreams of grandeur that I was going to make it bigger. <laughs> no. Whatever I can do will be enough. <laughs> and, um,. So once I get that done, then there's another two different blocks, one for the corner and one for the edges, uh, that will complete the circles out to the edge. Um, and then I will quilt this puppy and bind it and be done. Um, and then it can get thrown on my couch for all the animals, including my husband, <laughs> to sleep. <sighs> So, I did have a good Christmas. Um, one of my favorite gifts, as my mom already knows, are her hand-knit socks. I get a pair every year and I love them. I love them. Thank you, Mommy. Uh, this year they were purple and orange. I mean, kind of close to, to, uh, to Clemson colors, but I know better. Um, I also got some charms for bags and such. I got these. My auntie got me, oh, oh, I left them elsewhere. I got another, I got another set too. Um, it's a set that I've had in the past, but I really like them. And it, it's, um, it's the bigger version of this. And then there's one with bobbins on it. Um, I, I love them. 
I'm glad I got another set of them. And then um, I got a lot of other cute little gut chapstick. You, you know you're an adult and in, when you enjoy your favorite gift from Christmas is chapstick. It happened though. Um, and then I bought a couple other things, but they aren't here yet. Oh, I did buy one I can show you. Um, I, it's on my good notes, so let me find it here. I got a chart. Let's go back to documents. Go to cross stitch. Oh, where did I put it? Maybe I can't show you. Uh, is that it? Nope, that's Miss Campbell. Hmm. I'll just have to show you next time. One of them has not shipped yet. Maybe I'll just talk about both of them then. Um, but I did get two hands across the sea uh, red uh, charts that are on the smaller side. But today, FedEx arrived and gave me my, my big gift that I got myself after Christmas. So AccuCutter had, or Alki Quilt had a sale after Christmas. Um, the products were on sale and then you got another 20% off. Um, so I have been wanting for my pinwheel quilt. I really wanted a way to make a 12 inch square. The blocks I have make up a six inch square. Um, and again, I'm, I'm excited about this quilt, how it's gonna come together. It, um, I don't have a pattern, I'm just kind of making it up how I want it to and, and letting my inspiration come from, um, you've got mail from the quilt in there. I really want it to look similar or have a similar feel. Um, and it's. Now it's not going to be exactly similar because she had large blocks. I'm sure that her pinwheels were 12 inches wide on that bed. Um, and I'm going to have different sizes now. But um, I got, without further ado, the 12 inch, oh my god, this is so heavy, 12 inch Go Cube. So the reason why I got that is because the two dies I would need... Um, if I bought them individually, I was more than halfway to buying the set. And what I've come to find out, and I'm sure I knew this, but I didn't quite connect the dots, is that all their cubes um, have the same dies in them. Just the sizes are different. So you can get them and they can all work together. So the six inch that I um, share with my mom um, will work with the 12 inch that I now share with my mom because the AccuCutter is shared supplies. Um, and now I have a six inch square, six inch um, a half square triangle. I have the six inch quarter triangles, which will all make the big block that I'm looking for. What I thought was cool too is that it also comes in with another uh, set of three inch blocks. Um, so the, the three and a half inch block that makes a finished three inch block comes with another three inch half square triangle and then uh, on point uh, square, which I believe all are in the six inch block. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, so yeah, all three of those are duplicates, so it's kind of fun to have a backup. But uh, I just opened it up right before I started filming, um, and I was kind of waiting for it to come to film, and uh, so I'm excited. That's the big news. Alright, so I am uh, uninspired. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, do like a whip parade or to make grandiose 2024 plans. Um, I, I don't care to do those. Um, I might 
I, I, no, I can't even, I can't even say the words. I, I don't even want to do a whip parade. Uh, I don't mind sharing as I work on things, but I, I just, I, it's where I'm at, yo. Um, <laughs> but I do have one thing that is kind of not sewing related that I plan to do in 2024. I'm not one, a great one for res resolutions or... I mean, I think a, a fresh start, which is always a new year, it's always good to reflect upon last year. Are there new things that I want to do? Just kind of do a little check-in. Um, but I am uninspired to make a resolution of doing X, Y, or Z. Um, 2024 is the year I turn 50. So I plan to celebrate all year long, especially in July. Um, I think it's marvelous that I am turning 50 and I am so excited to continue to age well, think about the future, it, just lean into all the things I love, um, and just continue to find ways to do more of the things I love. Um, and what does that mean for the future? Um, as I have talked about in the past, I listen to a lot of podcasts because I am driving a lot. Um, I have a long commute just to go to work um, when I go to the store, um, but I travel easily an hour around the area um, for various customers when I go to their homes. So one of the podcasts I like to listen to um, is Laughter Permitted by Julie Foudy and Liz Ozawi. Um, Julie Foudy was a critical player, a uh, soccer player on the 1999 uh, team. I don't know if anybody remembers the 99ers. Um, she's super funny, which is why it's laughter permitted. But she worked with, um, she calls her Flash, and now why can't I remember her name? She is a coach that, um, oh goodness, hold on. Oh, Colleen Hacker. She is a psychology coach for sports teams, specifically, usually women's teams. She does a lot of professional speaking. And um, because she worked with Julie Foudy on the 99 team and on other things, um, she has been a regular um, guest on that show usually at the end of the year uh, or at the end of their season and they kind of wrap it up and have some exploratory information um, so one of the things that Colleen Hacker has uh, since her father had passed away in the last couple years he collected dimes so her saying is I don't want to spend a dime <laughs> which entertains me because Lord knows we're gonna be spending money come on Let's, let's not get crazy, but I would like to save dimes this year. So I um, have a pretty glass jar that I had my husband uh, poke a hole in the top of, uh, of the lid, and I'm going to fill that with dimes, see how many I can save, and not spend a dime this year. Um, if you have dimes to donate, feel free. But uh, that's that's my big thing because it makes me giggle a little bit and, you know, who doesn't want to start a collection of something? Uh, what's one more thing to collect, right? So, um, I have no idea. It's about 5.05. The sun is going down. I've been with you guys for about 38 minutes and so I'm going to say farewell. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. I hope you get a lot of stitching in. Um, I am anxious to hear what you guys are wanting to do. Maybe I'm alone in this. Do you guys have revol resolutions? Revolutions. Resolutions. Are there things for 2024 that you want to plan for? Um, again, I really don't have hard press things. I do have something planned for a birthday start, but I will tell you when it arrives. And, um... I just want to keep doing more of what I'm doing and whatever tickles my fancy. 
<laughs> as it were. I can be like Pam with the comments that tickle her fancy. Um, no, but I hope you guys uh, get to celebrate the new year the way you would like to. I am going to do so in my jammies. Maybe in the living room. Maybe I'll stitch. Maybe I'll sew. One never knows. It's five o'clock. I can't tell you what I'm going to be doing. Oh, the pressure. The pressure. But I will bid you adieu until next time and enjoy yourself with some good stitching. Bye.